Hey folks, I'm John P and on today's Geek Beat, we're gonna talk about the Liftmaster Jack Shaft Opener. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Full Sail University. You know, Dave, I just like saying the word jack shaft. Jack shaft. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to take a look at a very interesting type of garage door opener. You may have never seen this before. It is a jack shaft opener. They call it that because it doesn't mount in the middle of your ceiling. You'll notice this is my garage door. This is my ceiling. There is no garage door opener over here. That's because it's mounted right up here in the corner. It's a very unique, it's much smaller than you would expect it to be, but it's this rectangular little box. It only requires a couple of bolts to be mounted over here on this side, which Dave is standing on a, uh, uh, there you go. It's hard for Dave to reach that thing, but um, the, the way it works is you'll see a little round uh, like pipe there. Well, that simply slips on the shaft for the, the drive unit that opens the garage door and uh, it gets bolted on and that's it. So what happens is rather than using a chain or some kind of a pulley system to pull the, the, the door up, that thing rotates the bar directly. It's a direct drive system and it offers a lot of benefits which we'll talk about some of those later. But we've got a lot of components because this isn't just a garage door opener, it's a whole garage door system. Um, and so we're gonna go over a lot of different pieces. While we're standing here, while we got uh, Dave up on a ladder, <laughs> uh, we've got the garage door opener. We also, you'll notice we have a LiftMaster battery. Now this thing is going to provide power uh, even if the power to the house goes out. So that's important because you're gonna see in a minute, when this thing is closed, that's it. You are not opening this door from the outside unless you have power. So that's where the battery comes into play. A couple other quick things. One is the uh, re release unit. This is a release handle. So um, usually you see these things hanging off the middle of the, of the opener up here. In this case, you, a quick pull of this unit will disengage so we can manually open the door. Um, but Dave, come on down without killing yourself and you'll see that even if we disengage this piece right here, we can't actually open the door because this unit comes with its own built-in lock. This is totally badass, okay? Now we can manually undo the lock and if you look over on this side, there's a pin that pops out, okay? This is totally automated. So when we close the door, as soon as it clo it's closed, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I need to move the welder. As soon as the door is closed, the little pin comes out and it's locked. And when you go to open it, it unlocks first. And we'll show you that in a minute. So there's one other safety component, which is right up that little black piece. You'll notice it's pushing on this uh, cable. Now the cable is what has all the tension from the spring and everything, it helps lift the door. It is what lifts the door. But if this cable gets too much slack in it, it could come off the roller. And because the, the uh, LiftMaster 8500 is so powerful, if it just sat there spinning that jack shaft, it could destroy a door. And these are really expensive. So they provided that unit. And if it's not perfectly tensioned, the garage door opener just doesn't work. And that is an important point. These garage door openers, we got two of them, one on the big door over there, one on this door. They were professionally installed by the guys at Plano Overhead Door here in the Dallas area. Those guys were freaking amazing and I'm so glad they did it because when my doors were originally installed, the installers did not do a good job. There was a lot of tension. I mean, there was a lot of, these things were loose and there were problems with the way the rails were mounted. So part of the installation process was fine tuning all the settings on the doors for two reasons. One, so that these things don't tear up the doors and two, so that it extends the life of these LiftMaster units because they've got ridiculous warranties. They've got like lifetime warranties and stuff. So um, let's take a look at how the door works. There are a few different ways we can open the door. One is, the little wall touch units. Now, um, you've seen these before, but they're the, the units that come with the 8500 are a little more 
sophisticated than what I've seen in the past. First of all, they've got, a, they've got a little motion sensor here which will turn on a remote light. You can also turn on the light with this button. This big button here, that will open the garage door. We'll do it in a minute. But underneath, look, you'll notice there's actually a learn button. I really like this because usually you have to reach way up. There's a learn button on this, but unless you're six feet tall, you can't reach that. So you can actually uh, program things with the learn button right here. That's very nice. And one other cool thing, you'll see there's a minutes to close door and a timer. We can actually set a timer for one, five, or 10 minutes so that you never forget and accidentally leave the door open. If it's 10 minutes go by, it just beeps at you and closes. Okay, I'm gonna open the door. This is where things get really exciting because one of the big benefits of this type of garage door opener is how quiet they are. So here's how quiet it is. You almost can't hear the door opening. You hear a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of the wheels, and that's it. Maybe a little bit of electric motor hum and not much beyond that. So that is one of the big benefits. Okay, there is another way that we can open the doors right here. This is a, a LiftMaster remote control unit. You may have seen these before, but what surprised me about this, I had no idea because I've had these on houses before. This is a keypad that we can just program in to open and close the doors, but this thing will remember up to eight different doors. It's either seven or eight, I think it's eight. So you put in a different code, program it for the door, bingo, it'll open it. So we've got two doors, one keypad, we can open both. What's also cool is, if we wanna close the doors, you just hit the enter button and it issues a close command and it will close all the doors at once, which is really cool. So if you were like walking out of the garage and you wanna close all the doors, bingo. That I really like. Now. We can also use our garage door openers, which you have doubtless seen before. These are three button type units. So a touch of button number one gives us that door. And oops, I touched number two and I'm closing the other door as well. So I'm gonna just stop those two. And uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at what button number three does, which is amazing. If you come outside, you'll notice that we have these little accent lights uh, to light the driveway. And when I hit button number three, when I hit button number three, <laughs> There we go, I didn't hit it fully. We turn on the outside driveway lights. How cool is that? So if we're driving up at night, not only do we get illumination in the garage, but we can get it outside as we drive up just by hitting the button. I love that. Okay, there's some other super sophisticated stuff that this thing will do because we can control it by the internet. And I'm going to tell you all about that in just a minute when we go in here and set up. But in the meantime, let's take just a minute to thank our sponsor. You know, Dave, garage door openers don't just write their own apps. What? So, someone has to actually sit down and build an app that ties into the API. And the programmers who do that get paid the big bucks. Between Apple and Google's app stores, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded and we're just getting started. So now is the time to hop on the bandwagon and Full Sail University can help you make that dream a reality with their online mobile development bachelor's degree program you'll learn the programming and business sides of mobile development so you can concept, deploy, develop, and market applications from start to finish. Advanced programming languages, visual frameworks, usability principles, app development for iOS and Android systems, it's all in there. And with Full Sail's Project Launchbox program, you get a MacBook Pro preloaded with all the software you need, plus iOS and Android devices. Just visit fullsale.edu forward slash geekbeat to get started. And hey, if anyone wants to build some new geekbeat apps, just let Callie and I know. We've got some ideas involving robots, crustaceans, and bacon. Just saying. Dave, I almost forgot one other means of opening the garage door. If you have Homelink built into your car, you'll know it because you probably have like three little buttons in your car, like somewhere up in the top there, and you can just push the button and open your doors. You don't need one of these little remotes. Well, if you have the Homelink system, 
You can also program it to open these doors, but there's a little bit of a catch because these garage door openers are really new. They use like the latest kind of code system. And if unless you have a 2012 or newer vehicle, you're gonna need a little home link repeater. It looks like this. I'll send Dave back up on the ladder here. That little device that's plugged in, it's just a simple repeater and it comes with a one button remote. This is only used for programming the home link button in your car. So you go through the same programming process that you normally would, only you push this button instead of these if you have one of the older units. Okay, so, uh, and make sure, by the way, if you get these and you know you have a car that's older, older than 2012, just ask for the repeater. They'll probably give you one for free. Okay, having said that, there is one other little piece that we didn't mention because I didn't install it. In this garage, what I've done, I've got all this uh, fluorescent lighting and right here in my ceiling, I've got a little motion sensor which turns on just some of the lighting. That's good enough for us when we drive our cars in. But if you don't have that, what you get in the LiftMaster kit uh, with each garage door opener is one light that will will accommodate two bulbs. It plugs in with just a standard uh, power cord and it's wireless. So when the door opens, these are already pre-programmed that when the door opens, they turn on, you can push the light button, turns it on, etc. So those would get installed if you needed that. Now, let's look at internet related stuff because this is really exciting. Okay, what I've got here is I've logged in to the LiftMaster website and we've got a number of little components. First of all, there is an internet gateway. It's a tiny little device that plugs in with an ethernet cable and power, that's it. Once that thing is plugged in, you don't have to do anything to it. Um, but you go in and you set up an account on liftmaster.com and you add in your different devices. You'll see here, this is the web interface. It's got two devices, our double garage door, which I already programmed, and it tells me it's closed, and our driveway lights, which it tells me are off, and they've been off for five minutes, and the door's been closed for five minutes, very cool. We can do the same thing with iOS and Android apps. So we've got the iOS app here, and you can see the LiftMaster door is closed and the light is in an off status. In fact, just to show you what happens, if we just if we want to turn on the lights, we just t tap the button when our fingers aren't really cold and dry here. <laughs> tap the button <laughs> and it will turn on. I don't know, my fingers are too dry. It's too cold out here, Dave. Okay, we are going to add another garage door opener. So what we're gonna do in this little interface is down at the bottom it says manage places and it says add a new device. Okay, we'll add a garage door opener. So it says step one, locate, locate the bu learn button on your door opener. Okay, let's go over here. So we've got, we know we have the learn button on this little thing so I know where that is. Now, next. Now press the add button below, okay, add. Now press and release the learn button. Now, if you do it up there, you only press it once, but down here we press it twice. So I'm gonna hit it once, twice, and we're gonna wait a second. There you go. It, that's it, that was it. I pushed that button twice, it says now you've added it. So now name your device, and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna call it the uh, single garage door. single garage door and hit save. That's it, now we've got all these doors listed here. Okay, so you'll see that back in my interface here, I've got all these door openers. Now watch this, the home single garage door. I just opened the door, okay? I can do the same thing with the double garage door opener. And of course, I can turn on my driveway lights out there. So that's it, I can close them, open them. Now, notice the little beeping noise. It's coming from the garage door opener. 
That's because I issued a command for it to close remotely. And it's warning anyone who might be in front of the door, hey, the door is going to close. Why would we do that? We might do that because, for example, I'm going to close the other one now. We might do that because we're uh, away from home and we just remembered, oh, I left the garage door open. Let's close it. So it beeps all the way until it goes down, and then it stops beeping. Now that's not the only way that you could close the garage door because there are even more components. You gotta see this. Okay, there's also this little remote monitor. Okay, and you'll notice it's flashing red like the door is open because the door was just open a second ago. This is connected through the household unit. Now, one thing I've noticed about this is it has to be connected for a few minutes in order, like if you move it around, it needs a few minutes to kind of sync up with everything. But what happens is, because these doors are so quiet, we could put this in our kitchen or our bedroom or our living room, wherever you want to be notified when the door opens. And when we open a door, this thing will beep and it will say the door is open like it's doing right now. I need to probably give it a few minutes since I just plugged it in. When we have the doors open, every 10 minutes it will chirp to let you to remind you that the door is open. And then if you want, from wherever you are in the house that you have this, you just hit close door and it, it starts issuing a double flashing command here and it sends a, 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 a signal to close all of the doors at once. And of course, when you close them, they beep, and then it goes to green and says, okay, they're all closed. So you know that it's all good when they're closed. So you can, you can do all these things with the um, Android app, with the web interface, or with the iOS app. And I wanna show you how we made the light turn on and off remotely because what we did was inside here where our light switches are, we replaced one light switch with just the little LiftMaster light switch. So on and off, it works just like these, only you know a little smaller version. And then right under here, there is a learn button. And that's how we taught it to use the um, remotes the same way as the garage doors do. So. That is it. Let me turn these lights back on here for Dave. There you go. Um, that's it. That's the whole system. There's a lot of components. You can remote control it through little monitoring devices in the home, do it with the web interface, do it with your phone, do it with the remote control garage door openers. These LiftMaster units are the quietest things I've ever heard in my life. Um, and because they're so quiet and they're not mounted in the ceiling, they're not vibrating the ceiling. So even if they were quiet, if they were vibrating the ceiling, you'd still hear it through the house. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you guys. They cost about $650 installed each, and then there is, uh, there are the accessories. So the little things like, uh, for example, the battery backup is about $79. Um, sometimes you might get it in a special and get it wrapped in for free. Um, the little uh, uh, light switches are extra, but they're pretty cheap. And the monthly service on the internet is actually free. So why wouldn't you get these things? They're amazing. I really highly recommend them. You guys, stay tuned. We'll bring you more coverage starting next week. Two thumbs if you got them, as Callie would say on YouTube, and I'm out of here. Let's go play with garage doors.